Now here's a big one, concentration. Zeroing in, preoccupation is fatal, both on the freeway and in business. I had to learn this. You got to keep your mind concentrated. I have a little rule that says, don't start the business day till you get to the office. I used to start my business day in the shower or at the breakfast table, and it just messed up a lot of things. I'm sitting at the breakfast table, guess where my mind is? At the office. I even got mixed up going to the beach and, you know, trying to, you know, do some relaxing time. But sure enough, when I'm in the office, I'm uh, thinking about the beach. And when I'm on the beach, I'm saying I should be at the office. Now see, that's mixed up. We quoted that little quote from the Reader's Digest in the evening seminar, right? Wherever you are, be there. If you're at the breakfast table, be there. When you're having a conversation with somebody, be there. When you're on your way to work, be there. Enjoy the ride. Take a look around you. What's going on? Study human nature. What's happening? You know, be there. And then when you get to the office, you know, go for it. Reasonable time is enough time to achieve all of your goals. Just jot that down. Reasonable time is enough time. I had to learn that. Reasonable time is enough time. Here's why. It's not the hours you put in. It's what you put in the hours. If you start depositing greater ideas into the hours you've got later than now, I'm telling you later, you can't believe the productivity that will flow. The ideas you can't think of now, a year from now, they'll start to flow. And when you deposit those ideas in the hours you've got, productivity multiplies by two, three, five, ten. And then do priorities on your goals. What's important this week? What's important this month? Here's the next one. Often review. Just go over your goals to make sure that your list is working for you. It's got you inspired. It's got you turned on. Somebody says, how come you're up so early? Say, if you were headed where I'm headed, you'd be up early too. Well, if you were going to meet who I'm going to meet, you'd be up early. If it was going to stack up for you like it's stacking up for me, you'd be getting up early. This is why you need to think on paper. Put your game plan on paper to make sure you're not spending major time on minor things. Little phrase I have says, don't mistake movement for achievement. It's not that difficult to get busy. What you have to do is check to see what you're busy on. Because it's easy to haul out the trash and fix the screen door, get the car washed, take the kids to school. I mean, it's easy to stay busy, right? The key is on what? And so the rule is never give in to the temptation to clear up small things first. Instead of clearing up all your small things, start on your major task and loop back and clear up your small things later. Mm -hmm. But something about small things, they're like rabbits in the field, they multiply. Mm -hmm. If you start working on your small things, the end of the day will come and you're still working on small things and your major task has not been touched. So you've got to discipline yourself to get straight into your most important task and stay with it until it's done. Yeah, and there are a lot of small things that are unavoidable. I mean, you, have to, you just have to do them. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a concept called working in real time. Working in real time, so if, it's a, if it's a less than a two minute task that pops up, do it immediately. Yeah. Return the phone call, sign the note, uh, read something, make the decision, uh, dictate the memo, whatever happens to be. If it's less than two minutes and it's urgent, then do it immediately. Don't store it. But, and then get right back to your major. To accomplish major tasks, you need to carve out blocks of time where you won't, can, you can work without interruption. Uh, and that's what I do is I work at home, uh, and disconnect my telephone. And so I can work nonstop for two or three hours. You get extraordinary amounts done. I write and publish, uh, four or five books every year. Most people that I know do not publish one book in three to five years. Uh, I publish, and I publish with major publishers. Um, and, and, and they're good books, and they're two and three hundred page books, and they're absolutely extensively researched, extremely detailed, well written, uh, beautiful books. Uh, they're paid uh, big advances by major publishers. I do four a year. You know, how can you produce so many books? I you know people have been trying to get a book done for years. I said, well, I just organize my time, and I block off major chunks, and I work those chunks.
So what we know is that the key to success is first of all, you have to know exactly what you want. And then second of all, you have to focus and concentrate. You have to focus and concentrate. The mind always moves towards its currently dominant thought. And otherwise you become jack of all trades, master of none. I mean, I became a permanent consultant. I was good at a lot of things, but no, nothing really good at one thing. And until I concentrated, maybe on the psychology of winning and, and becoming an audio speaker on tape and pushing that up to the consciousness, did I ever become successful? But if you can find a team or a coach and a mentor and you get focused in one area, your expertise grows with that and you develop focus and discipline around that one thing. People say, well, wait a minute, if you do that, you're just going to be good at that. The great thing about that is when you're successful in one thing, they think you're a success in your whole life. And they give you free tickets when you could afford them. This is, the, this is what the crazy thing about being really good at something. They give you free tickets when you're making more money than the average Joe. So the thing to do is take one thing and become really good at it and then people will sponsor you. The other thing, of course, is that when you have a team, when you have comrades, when you have friendly competition, like Olympians, or uh, you have to run wind sprints, and you have to compete with one another on the same team, you find yourself helping other people because you're all on the team together. You're not gonna beat anyone out of their position, but you're trying to be your best among a fast field. So I think realizing that you're with a team of winners, that you're disciplined by training and no train, no gain. Super Bowl, Olympic, astronaut, all the same. Rehearse, on the field, simulate, drill, learn the plays, remember the next thing you know, it becomes like driving your car, brushing your teeth, second nature. And everyone says, look at that spontaneous performance. Spontane spontaneity is conditioned reflex. Right. You're only spontaneous when you've learned to do it before and you're comfortable doing it. But you don't just do it without learning. So I think the coach, the equipment, the team, the comrades, and the training is everything. Multitaskers are less efficient than single taskers. Mm. Uh, people multitask because they have uh, a modified form of attention deficit disorder. Mm. Average adult in America has an attention span of 45 seconds. Mm. They're very easily distracted. So therefore, so therefore, what we do is uh, we forget multitasking and instead we try to focus. So we get di diverted or digressed into another task. We come back to it like a gyroscope coming back to full uh, upright position. You're single tasking. Now, here's some of the keys. And again, so again, I teach these in my programs. The number one rule is do things faster. In other words, pick up the pace. Move quicker. If you want to get more done, move quickly. Pick up the pace. Just move faster. Just move, move. Just imagine you're under a deadline. The other end of the building is on fire. You've got to get this done. It's absolutely amazing what happens when you put yourself under pressure. Number two is um, work longer and harder. Um, uh, as Jim uh, Rohn uh, suggests, a wonderful comment, start a little earlier, work a little harder, stay a little later. If you come into the office a little bit earlier, one hour of uninterrupted work is the equivalent of three hours of work in a busy office environment. So you find opportunities. You come in an hour earlier when no one's there, and you immediately start work, and you get an enormous amount done. Uh, work at lunchtime. So everybody goes for lunch, everything quiets down. Don't go for lunch because everybody else is. Use that time to get on top of things. And stay an hour later. Yeah. What you'll do is you'll beat the traffic coming in, beat the traffic going home. It won't affect your schedule at all, but you'll actually double your productivity. So that's one way. Work longer and harder. The other is work faster. Uh, the third way is do things you're better at. Keep asking, what are the things that I am the very best at? Because those are almost invariably the things that pay you the highest hourly rate. So do more and more of the things that you're better at. Now, the fourth task is to get better at your key task. Improving at your key task is just critical. It's sort of like skiing. If you're a, 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 just an amateur skier, you have to go very slowly for fear of falling. The better you get at skiing, the faster you can ski. Mm -hmm. So since most skiers, you know, kind of measure how many times, how many runs did I have today? Well, a, a good skier can get you know, 10 or 15 runs down the whole mountain. A poor skier may only get five or six. The good skier is two or three times as productive because 
he or she is better at the key task. So say, what's the most important thing I do? And get better at it. Um, it's, it's the most amazing thing. I uh, gave a talk yesterday to, to a hundred uh, very successful uh, business people. And uh, I can speak for eight hours. I often do full-day seminars. I had um, 12 minutes. So what I did is I took uh, a whole series of ideas and I uh, condensed them around three key ideas and three graphs um, and did the whole thing in about 12 minutes. And uh, they said it was one of the best talks they ever, had ever given because you just pick up the pace and you get really, really fast and cover the most important points. In your business, say, if I was really, really good at prospecting, well, then I would have far more better people to speak to. So therefore, I'm going to get really, really good at prospecting. Now, another way that you can get more done faster is to um, work with other people, is to uh, do things together, uh, get people who cooperate with you. So, for instance, sometimes I will sign a hundred books, but when I have to, when I've agreed for the, with a client that I'll autograph a hundred books, then I have uh, two people, who are my staff members. One sits on one side and they open the book and shove it forward, open to the signature page. And I quickly sign it and shove it to the to my right. And there's a second person there that takes the book and packs it. And so it goes bang, 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 mm-hmm. bang, bang. I can get through a hundred book, hundred books in ten minutes. Whereas if I did it myself, it would take me half an hour. So, so sometimes you can, you can work with others. Another thing we talked about is bunch your tasks. Um, bunching your tasks means do a lot of, again, like signing books, uh, sign all 100 books at once. Uh, do all of your letters, uh, or proposals at once. Do all of your prospecting at once. Bunch your tasks. And another thing that you can do, one of the greatest of all time savers, is to downsource, down, downsize, outsource, uh, delegate, and eliminate low value tasks. Get rid of them all together. Don't try to do more of them. Get rid of them all together. Well, again, we have to keep coming back. And I used to use the example of a mariner that would use a sextant to shoot the moon and the stars to find out exactly where uh, the sailor was on the ocean. Well, you have to do the same thing. You have to stop every single day and sometimes during the day and think, what are my goals right now? What are my most important goals right now? And of my most important goals, what's the most important thing I can do right now to achieve my most important goal? And you have to keep coming back. Uh, another model uh, that I a metaphor is, is the uh, fashion photographers. Before they had um, automatic focus, so the fashion photographer would have to every single time they move, they have to refocus the camera. So you see that you see that you can imagine you've seen them on in movies on television. They keep moving and and focusing and refocusing and refocusing as they move around the model. Well, you need to do that throughout the day. Keep refocusing, 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 and keep asking yourself, um, is what I'm doing right now the most valuable use of my time? So you have to keep refocusing, keep saying, is what I'm doing right now the most valuable use of my time? Mm. Is this the most valuable use of my time? Keep asking throughout the day and make sure that if somebody came in and asked you, is that the most valuable use of your time right now? You could look up and say, yes, it is. Like my talking to you right now is the most valuable use of my time right now. Mm-hmm. There's no other uh, focus or concentration. And the instant I stop talking to you, I will immediately shift like a sniper moving to the next target at the telescopic site onto the now the most valuable use of my time. Mm-hmm. Imagine we're standing in a big empty room, right? And we're standing in one corner and I give you a simple instruction. I want you to go to that corner in a straight line, right? Off you go, no big deal, right? Without telling you, I slip a chair in front of you. What do you do? You go around the chair. Now you just disobeyed what I told you to do. I told you to go to that corner straight line. But this is the amazing things about human beings, which is when we're given a clear destination, we use our own creativity and our own sense of innovation and our own problem solving abilities to overcome obstacles to get to the destination. In other words, the destination is more important than the route. Right? We are flexible about the route. We are obsessed with the destination. Reset. We're standing in the corner together and I give you a simple instruction. Go somewhere in this room in a straight line. And you say to me, well, where do you want me to go? I'm like, I don't know. You're smart. Figure it out. Go in a straight line. And so you pick a point and you start walking. And without telling you, I put a chair in front of you. And what do you do? You come to a grinding halt. I say, what did you stop for? You go, well, you put a chair in front of me. Or you'll make a sudden turn and go in another direction. Right? And this is the problem. It's the same obstacle. 
The difference is when you have a clear set, a clear destination, the obstacles become easy to overcome. When you don't have a clear destination, you keep coming to a grinding halt. And what we do in our companies is we're counting the steps we're taking along the route, but we're never looking at the destination, right? So company says, made a million dollars this year, we were only planning on making 800,000. Like we took 10 steps, we're only planning on taking eight. Where are you going? No clue, right? We count the steps. And so the point is, is that people want to feel that the effort that they're exerting actually are moving somewhere. And so successful measurement, successful recognition is not just for the steps you take. It's not just for the effort. It's that the effort you exerted moved us closer to where we're trying to get to. I head for Northern California, Clear Lake, ride the Jeep trails up on top. One of my great recreations where there's no stop lights, no traffic lights, and where the air is clear and where you can do some thinking. Uh, part of it's to get away, but I'm now going to put a fax machine in my motorhome so I can, uh, you know, update my technology. Part of my, um, part of my mode for the future is to be uh, in touch and out of reach. I want him to say, for the next, you know, little while, you can contact him, but you can't find him. You know, he's, he's off in the mountains somewhere. So I love to do that, but I'm writing a little less. I'm a little more cautious now than I used to be, but... Uh, you know, all these years, it's been fun for me. You know, dirt bike on top, solo. I just have to get away by myself for all the traveling I do around the world and all the hotels and all the, uh, you know, flights that we take, flying everywhere. It's great to be alone. There's something to be said for solitude. You know, not forever, but, you know, get away, think things over, make some wise decisions, hopefully, and just contemplate the past and uh, design the future.